is up, everyone? Give me an F in the chat for me real quick as we wait for the others to end up joining the call real quick. Hopefully, Matt is able to get his phone and set up working. Maybe he forgot the time frame. Who knows? Who knows what's happening? I'm here. Oh, okay. Yeah, just, just saw. DC live. <laughs> Let's uh, go. Let's go. Welcome, friends, family, to this edition of a uh, leadership of the herd call. Leadership of the herd. That ain't Leader, it. leaders of the herd call. Leaders of the herd call. It's my first time running one of these. I mean, I'm excited. <laughs> Got to get it rolling. Hey, the, the, this is this is required A level content. I know you're bringing it, man. Super duper I mean, excited from what you laid out for us, man. And hell, absolutely crushing it with Brian. With uh, I mean, dude, I, he, like you think he was saying he's, he's hit up more life insurance sales, you know, in the past couple of months than he has ever before. Which means this will be a banger call. Super excited. So I think it's been just over five weeks is what it, what it is. So after this week, it'll be six. Uh, with this strategy alone, I have 12, soon to be 14 after today's uh, life applications in the hopper. I will take 14 life every five and a half weeks all effing year. I mean, I've seen better. Oh, I've shit. seen better. Get out of here. <laughs> better from cross sales? Not My me. absolute me. ass you have. <laughs> like, we're not talking about people that are, you know, out here asking for life insurance specifically. Yeah. We're talking about an absolutely top to bottom referral yeah. and, a, and a, a refresh strategy on being able to get brand new life for people that are actually healthy. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. So here is the first disclaimer we will give you. One, first disclaimer. There's going to be some work you got to put in to do this. Actually, Two. there is. There's going to be work, <laughs> and you've got to put in work when it works because I'm not kidding you. I'll be on with Charles and Matt, and I'll be like, damn it, Matt. Like, I have three more life that I got to do this afternoon. Like, I got to go. I got to go. Yesterday. <laughs> oh god so here's the deal disclaimer one you will have to take action and do work disclaimer two this is not going to sell life policies for you this is going to uncover opportunity number three you're actually still gonna have to sell it okay so here's the deal this is the fourth disclaimer uh this strategy has actually been given to you for the last six months Nobody actually watches the videos to know that, though. So I'm going to show this to you. Matt, this strategy, not, gems. Matt's not, not mad. Matt's not mad. He's disappointed in you. I'm actually mad. I oh hated my when my mom would say that. Brian, son, I'm not mad at you. I'm disappointed in you. And it's like, mom, can I, you, can't you just be mad at me? Oh, man, this bums me out. Okay, I'm going to show you guys. Actually, I'll show you at the end of the call. You don't deserve to see it at the beginning of the call. Okay, you don't deserve <laughs> it. But I'll show you at the end. Because this strategy has been given to you on a silver plate for six months. But we're going to show it to you now. Okay, here's the deal. 
This isn't just a life insurance strategy. This is an umbrella policy strategy. This is an auto insurance liability policy strategy. This is optional endorsement strategy. Yes, this is, we labeled it life insurance because that's the largest uh, premium driving piece to the strategy, but it is not the whole strategy. Okay, here's the concept. Okay, here's the concept. I'm gonna break it down. When you have a client coming up for renewal, any client, I don't care who they are, when you have any client coming up for renewal, you have a drip that starts out and I'm just gonna lay it out and then we'll show you the build, okay? I'm gonna lay it out, then I'll show you the process. When a client is coming up for renewal, everybody gets reports what's coming up for renewal. It may be 90 days out, 60 days, 30 days, a week out, doesn't matter. You know your reports, you know your processes. As soon as somebody hits your report that they are renewing, you put them onto the renewal processing drip that you are going to build, okay? Part of that drip, the email subject line should have something to the effect of pending docs required for your renewal. Pending docs required for your renewal, okay? Something to that effect that's in the chat, okay? These pending documents are simply going to be this form, okay? This is the whole strategy based upon this form, okay? Every renewal is going to say pending documents for your renewal to process. Here's what we're going to do. One, we need the first and last name to know who actually filled out the form. That was a mistake I made the first time. I didn't have the, I didn't have the full name. Be like, I don't know who's filling this out. So that was something that I addressed. <laughs> That was a problem. Oops. 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 Missed some life opportunity there. Like that, we filled it out. We never heard from you. Um, here's what we go over, okay? What has changed this year? Kids, promotion, job changes, living situation. What happened this year? No matter how big or small, we want to let it know. We want to know. Yes, something's changed. Great. We'll call them and see what changed, right? This is not going to remove you from having to do a job here, okay? Yes, something's changed. No, something hasn't. Great. What's your current annual income? We're going to put in 100000 just for this strategy, okay? Just to walk you through. Do you have savings of over 20000 If you own a home, what kind of equity do you have in here, okay? How many kids do you have? Do you carry life insurance? If so, with who and how much? If it's you, and I'm going to give you this link, okay? I'm going to give you my form. Please don't fill it out. Please I mean, use I'll it. I'll give mine too just because it's. I tweaked yeah. a couple things and – Brian actually came up with this strategy like nine months ago, and then I added to it because he just wanted to have people tell him, no, I don't want life insurance. So, dude, I, so just, I just looked at my old form because I didn't rewrite the form. I just created – I didn't go over and edit that one that I first used. I created a new one after I talked to you, and I opened it just now thinking that that was the one I was going to share – and it is so absolutely disgusting, the questions that I was asking. I was shooting myself in the foot. Matt, do you want life, do you? Do you want life insurance? He said, are you interested in life insurance? Uh, no. I'm a moron. No. So here's the deal, okay? This form, I want to go over this step by step, okay? If you, are, if you write auto insurance, which most people do, but if you don't, great, move on, take this out of your form. If you write auto insurance, having somebody give, give you their annual income is the first step that you should have in determining their exposure, okay? We're gonna do some backwards math here. When you write an auto policy, you should be asking them what their income is, what their equity in their home is, because you're determining what their exposure is, okay? For the liability limits. These are questions we should be asking. Now, you can reverse engineer this. Know your state and what it they what people are able to be sued out of from a wage garnishment standpoint. California and most states are 25%. The state can garnish your wages up to 25% for 10 years. Google it, find out what your state is. That doesn't mean they're going to get all of it, but that's what they can file for, okay? So I, whenever I get this number, this client says, I'm making 100,000 a year. I'm gonna say, okay, 100,000 a year is what they are garnishable for. That's 25% of their income for 10 years, right? 
So I'm going to divide this by 10. Well, if I can click a button, I am. I'm going to divide this by 10. That means we are garnishing $10,000. Excuse me, every year we're able to garnish $10,000, okay? That $10,000 is a quarter of their income. I'm going to times that by four. So what you're telling me is if you've got, if you're making $100,000 a year, right? If you're making $100,000 a year, or that is what your limits of insurance are, $100,300, right? If your limits on your policy are $100,300, you are telling me that your exposure is saying your income is 40 grand, right? If you're telling me you have 100, 300 limits when I look at their account, they're saying they make 100 grand a year, okay? And I look at their policy and they have 100, 300 limits. What they're telling me is they actually make 40 a year. So this is the first red flag. And I explained that a little bit weird, so I'm gonna back up and do it again, okay? Whenever somebody fills out this section of how much money they make a year, I am gonna to go to their policy limits and see what they have, okay? So if their policy limits say 100, 300, 250, 500, we can do backwards math. If they tell me they make 100 grand a year, I know that if my state says I can garnish 25% of their income for 10 years, 25,000 times 10 years, I know their limit should be $250,000, right? This should be something we're doing with everybody, every client. If you're telling me you're making 100 grand a year, your limit of coverage should start at 25500 Now, if I go to their account and I see we have 100, 300 limits, I'm going to reverse math and tell them, hey, it looks like your policy only covers $100,000, your liability limits. That means it is covering $10,000 of income every 10 years, okay? Times that by four gives you their annual income that they're saying they're covering, 40 grand. What you're telling me is your limits you currently have are covering $40,000 of income, but you're telling me that you're making 100,000. We gotta fix this. Now you're looking at raising limits. If they're making more, they say, hey, we're at 150. Great, do the math and see what limits they need, see what limits they have. Now you have an opportunity to upsell. This is designed to get you to look at umbrella policies. The next two sections are also for umbrella policies, okay? If somebody has in excess of $20,000 in their savings account, they typically and statistically have much more than that. If somebody has 20 grand in their savings, they typically have a little bit more than that or significantly more, and they need a, an umbrella policy. If someone has equity in their home, you can add that to their exposure. These are all umbrella questions and determining their liability for their auto policy, okay? That's these first questions. It also tells you, hey, should they be looking at replace or looking at a life policy for the remainder of their home mortgage? All this form is doing is giving you opportunity that you have to uncover. Disguised by a, hey, policy's renewing, we have some pending documents that need to get completed, okay? Chat, if you end up writing annuities, how, how, how much would you love if you knew up front that someone's making, you know, 20,000, you know, has 20,000, 15, 200, 500,000 in a bank account making 0.000%? Like, I mean, the, that number is so low right now. And if they're not touching it, it's a perfect opportunity if your state allows it for, you know, you have, with a life insurance run to be able to end up writing an annuity for it. So there's a lot of ways for this to be leveraged. It's just showing you the blueprint, just good stuff. This is basically, here's what this is. In my opinion, this is a client filling out their grocery list, right? Milk, eggs, flour, salt, pepper. And they're giving you these ingredients and you can bake them or, or cook them almost anything. And I like it because it's not, it's not direct. We're just fact finding right now. 
And I just looked to give you guys some statistics in the last five and a half weeks. I've got 14 life applications submitted with 26 forms filled out. That's stupid. This That's form, stupid. the only thing this form is doing is uncovering opportunity. You need to look at this form and the client's account to now walk down the road you want to walk down. So if they're saying, hey, I've got kids, I don't carry life insurance, this should be a pretty significant red flag for you to talk about, right? Or, hey, I do carry life insurance. If so, who with and how much? Well, it's with MetLife and it's uh, 200000 Or it's with MetLife and it's 500000 My next conversation is great. When did you issue that? When was the last time you looked at it? Because here I'm looking at your income and I'm looking at the equity in your home and I just Googled your home address, okay? I Googled your home address and saw what it was going for on Zillow, which plus or minus is gonna be accurate. And I looked at your equity and I determined how much you have left to pay in your mortgage ballpark. And I looked at your income if you were to replace it and you're off on where you need to be just by doing a just a quick look. Now I can say, hey, I'm looking at your stuff. When did you look at that 500,000? Because I'm seeing your exposure or your, your life insurance need is probably closer to a million or a million and a half. Like, are you aware that probably only costs a couple more bucks a month to fix? Like if you're paying for 500,000 and you issued it two years ago, rates haven't changed that much. Let's get you the full million, cancel that if it makes sense. If it doesn't, let's just add another 500000 Yep. You know, sometimes it makes sense to replace policy. Sometimes it doesn't. When this form comes in, it's so, the answers are so great that you can pivot in a million different directions. We've written premium from endorsements. We've uncovered just where you're at here with motorcycles and boats and ATVs and things that we've left on the table. Um, I mean, it is the way that this is working for us is something that I wish I would have been doing years ago. Honestly, you should not take this form and go and have every one of these yeses or nos extend to a new question to do your job for you. This is a basic check-in on what you should be doing. And then after that check-in is done, you are the one that's uncovering this form should not do your job for you. I see too many agents, I see too many agents trying to use a form to gather every single piece of data to get a validated quote. Like they're asking. And that person's going to look at that form and go, I'm not doing this shit. Done. Yep. Yep. And if they want to send it to them, like, Hey, I've got a, I've got an extensive form that you can fill out and I can quote everything for you without chatting if that's easier, or we can do this via text or we can jump on a phone call. What do you want to do? Maybe you've got weirdos that are like, give me the 30 page form. <laughs> you know, maybe you do. Yeah. Like I, I send out what Brian sent me. This is another really cool piece that I add to my life insurance stuff. And thankfully I didn't have to reinvent the wheel. I just stole Brian's. I said, Hey, life insurance supplemental app. It's going to ask me almost every single thing. My life insurance app is going to do. That way I don't have to get everything. I only have to get a few things. And if they're filling out a life app, it's easier for them to do the supplemental. I go fill it out. Any extra questions, I shoot them a text on. That's a really good form as well to have in your back pocket. And okay. for those of us that are CIA you know, uh, agents, I mean, we have access to back nine, which they're able to end up filling out that information while we're on Zoom if we feel like it. So, I mean, you know, for those that are captive, yep, there's this is an easy, quick way to do it. On the other side of a coin, you can be walking someone through it with back nine and uh, just kind of running through that if you're a CIA person, because it'll take literally five minutes for you to end up getting that app completed and getting it something scheduled, yep. throwing that out there. Now, let's go over this one more time to make sure everybody's on the same page, okay? This, you need to one, check with your state on what is garnishable wages, what you can legally garnish, okay? Because this is what you're gonna be calculating off of, okay? Mm -hmm. If someone says they're making $150,000 a year, my garnishment is 25% of that income for up to 10 years. So I'm saying 37,500, I can garnish for 10 years. I actually put a two, two, but we'll put 10 years. This is my 
liability limit I should have just from income. This doesn't count. This doesn't count equity in home or anything else. This is my liability limit. Your next step will be going to that person's policy and seeing what limits they have and saying, hey, we are grossly underinsured. We're only covering you for $100,000 of coverage. We're leaving 275 on the table. We need to fix this. We need an umbrella policy. Your, your coverages haven't changed in 10 years. Your $100,000 limit, and this is reverse math, your $100,000 limit is 10 years of income. And if this is 25% of your income, right? Excuse me, that would be four. So 10,000 times four is $40,000. You're telling me your, your coverage is for $40,000 of income. That's what your coverage is for. You're making 150. We need to fix this. But man, like you're... a lot of the people are just too lazy to go look up how much the fair debt collection amount is. So uh, I, I put it in the chat so that that way they don't have to worry about it in the case that that was a stumbling point for you. All 50 Correct. states, everything ends up being lined out. There you go. No reason not to use it. Copy, paste it, make it a bit.ly link. I don't care. Do what you got to do. I use this same strategy every time I write an auto policy. I don't even ask the income anymore. When I write an auto policy, I say, okay, great. And I know the numbers now because I've been doing the same thing, dividing it so many times. Like, great, you've got 100, 300 limits. You're making 40 grand a year, right? No, I make 65. Great, let's fix this. You're underinsured. Or you've got 50, 100. Oh, so you make 20 grand a year, right? No, I don't. Okay, let's fix it because that's what your insurance covers. The best part of this whole strategy is it's matter of fact. Like you yeah. can lie about the numbers, but the numbers don't lie. And it's not based on feeling, it's based on factual data that they are giving you. So this is the strategy, it's the first part, okay? The second part of the strategy is actually building out the campaign, okay? So this is what you're gonna do for that. I send out a text message okay so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to come in and you are going to start with the text message and go into a drip hit the plus sign start a new one everybody's going to get this recording okay everybody's going to get this it's going to come in about an hour and, you're going to do renewal and, and it process. cost a hundred dollars to get the recording i'm just kidding you're going to do renewal process and you can see i don't have a renewal process group hit the ad group okay once that's done Little green box will pop up. My, my internet's been being fun today. Green box pops up. You go renewal process. Now you have to pick the one you just created, okay? Now you're going to pick your throttle. You're going to pick your time frames that these go out. I always start mine at 10 a.m., okay? I'm going to stop mine at 4 p.m. That's just how I do mine. So I want to have time in between before and after to handle stuff, okay? Now that I've created my constraints and groups and named it, I hit submit. We're going to start with the day zero text message. I'm going to say, hey, first name, it's Matt, your insurance agent. FYI, your renewal is coming up. Thank you so much for trusting us. I sent you a detailed message. We have some docs that are pending for your renewal. Okay. That footage makes them seem like they need to get this done. And then I'll say, here it is if you don't have the email, okay? And then I'll come to Bitly. And let's just say this was my link for my form. Actually, I have my form here somewhere. Where did she go? Where did she go? I exited it. Let's just pretend this is my form link, okay? I'm going to come to Bitly. I'm going to create a link, right? Uh-oh, there was an error. Let's try and grab this one. Let's grab this one, okay? Here's my bit.ly link. Come over here, let's paste it, create it, great, copy it, come back to my drip. Here's my form. Hey, first name is Matt, your insurance agent, FYI, your renewal's coming up. Thank you so much for trusting us. I sent you a detailed message. We have some docs that are pending for your renewal. Here it is for you. Um, here it is if you don't have that email, right? And I always go through my stuff, make sure spelling's right, make sure vocabulary's right, check it, great, submit, done. 
Now I'm gonna go and create an email template, okay? This is a little bit longer of a process. I'm not gonna go through the whole thing, but I will take a screenshot of what mine looks like, and I will send that in the chat as well so you have it. Um, let me log in real quick to mine. Actually, you know what I that? Like, just also keep this in mind. From an e &O perspective, this is also very, very helpful and massive for when you're, you're, you're showing proof that every year, right? You're, you're verifying what their, what their amount is, how much they end up need, life changes, things like that. Because if a lot of people aren't aware, uh, Hulk Hogan actually tried to sue his state farm rep because he said, you never asked me about, uh, about, uh, umbrella coverage. You never told me anything about that. So whenever he was actually, uh, he was actually sued. He was able to show proof that no, actually every year I sent this out to him detailing why getting an umbrella was a great idea for him specifically. So if you haven't looked at that, that's easily found on Google. If you're just trying to have a reason on why, like, look, I have to talk to you about it and I need to detail your file because if I don't like, Hey, that falls back on me. I need to make sure that you know that anyway, throwing that out there. Perfect. I am not going to be emailing specific anything out to people. If you registered for the call, it's going to go to the email that you registered automatically. Okay. All the recordings go into whatever email you registered for the call will be out in about an hour or two. Um, so this is the email that I send out. Now, my name's lowercase because I added it in the system that way. So it's going to say, thank you, Matthew. Thanks so much for trusting us this year. There's a couple things you need to go over. Every year, things change. Just a renewal email. Here's the form. Here's a place to schedule a time on my calendar. This is very straightforward. There's nothing exciting or special about this um, email. And I actually can't upload links to the chat, so I'm sorry, but you can see this here on the recording, so you can pause it and you can make it the same way um, if you'd want. But this is my email. It's straightforward. There's nothing, and it's similar with All Built For You, like even the strategy. There's nothing very special about it. And there's nothing it that is. needs to be done perfect. Like yeah. yours looks different than mine. I'm looking at mine right now and it just looks different, but it still works. Yep. Yep. If you want to copy mine exactly awesome, um, I am not telling you it's the best way to do it because I, I mean, there's probably way better ways to do that. Okay. But it works. It's an email. It gets the information. If you don't have their email on file, that drip that you set up for the text it gives them the form like, hey, if you don't have the email, here's the form. They say, no, I didn't get it. Well, let me update the email in your account. What's your email? Great. Awesome. You can always send them that like that template again from a one-on-one -on -one within a customer's account. Okay. So after you build the drip, it's here. Renewal process. Renewal process group. There's a one text message. Depending upon how far out your renewals are, you might want to consider adding a secondary drip. I have a second option on mine because my renewals are like, what, what are ours? 40 days out, 45 days out, 60 Roughly. even. Yeah. I have another drip that hits day 20. Okay. On mine, my day 20 drip basically says, Hey, you should have gotten your renewal by now. If you opened it and something's off or something doesn't seem right, please give me a call. Let's go over it. Here's a calendar link if you want to book a slot for that, right? Covering, it's making covering sure- Covering your butt again. Yep. Here we go is another text message saying, hey, you should have gotten your renewal by now. If something's off, please reach out. They don't mail us your same things, right? We get them in a report somewhere, but it's not like we're getting everybody's renewal on our desk to look through. But if there's a problem, like reach out. That's what the day 20 message is. How long after the email renewal drip do you wait to send the life SMS? As soon as I get a form and I've reviewed it and reviewed there's areas of concern, I'm reaching out and I'm saying, okay, great. I reviewed the form. I'm going to go over into Matthew's account and I'm going to say, I may even send a ringless voicemail because it's personal, mm -hmm. you know? come in, do a record now and say, hey, Corey, it's Matt, your insurance agent. I got your form. Really appreciate you filling that out so we can process the renewal. There's a couple things on there that were a little concerning for me. Um, first, your liability limits are basically like you, you're telling me you make $20,000 a year in your liability limits, but you're, 
you know, you're actually making 120 a year. We need to fix that. We should be addressing this every year. Somehow we missed the ball on this. We need to fix it. Um, I got a couple other areas that I'm concerned about, but I don't want to leave a huge voicemail. I'm going to send you a text message with a link to my calendar in a second. If you could please book an appointment to go over this so that we can make sure we address your account. Um, these are important things we need to go over. Talk soon. Hang up, send it, done. Then they book a slot on that appointment or on that calendar. If I haven't heard from Corey in a couple days, I'm going to reach out, right? I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say, hey, let's make a task. Follow up on Corey's life insurance or form, right? And I'm going to schedule this for Tuesday of next week. If they haven't made an appointment, I'm going to get a task. I'm going to say, oh, Corey hasn't called back. Let's do another RVM. Automation doesn't always have to roadmap the exact process. Automation starts it and you put your hands on the wheel because every situation, this renewal is going to be a little different and maybe the conversation you're having is a little different. So you're just giving, you're having the tools to do this so that you can follow up with them. You can also create a renewal processed pipeline status, okay? You can have on your leads manager page, here, let me show you how to do it. You can go to your settings and you can add a new status over in deal status. You can add a status and it can be called renewal processed opportunity or you can just say renewal opportunity and I'm gonna put this to my default pipeline and hit submit. Every time I do a form and I go to a client's account, I can put them straight in that pipeline. No automations attached. It just keeps it in front of my agency of things that are opportunity we're working on. That's another way you can use your pipeline, okay? Any questions about some of this so far? Now, if you know you're having if you're having trouble with um, with email open rates, you could have a ringless voicemail go out at the same time with, hey, it's Brian. I just emailed you something important about your renewal. If you could check that email and follow those instructions, I'd appreciate it. OK, that's another little hitch that you could throw in here. Now, if you notice, it didn't pop up in our pipeline initially because our pipeline is settings. These check marks tell you what shows up on your pipeline, okay? So make sure if you add something to your pipeline, you go to that little pencil icon next to your default right here. It's pencil. We'll take you to the settings of your pipeline when it pops up. Unfortunately, I didn't let the whole page refresh, so it won't do it a second time. But that's how you edit the settings there. Any specific questions? This strategy brings you a ton of opportunity, but it is... There's passive marketing and there's active marketing. This is a very active marketing strategy to your current book of business, okay? This is not passive by any means. There is a lot of work you have to do on this strategy, but 14 apps in five weeks from 26 form fill outs, I'll take that all freaking day long. I'll work for that. Yep. Any questions about this? Do you want to go over liability stuff again? Do you want to go over the umbrella stuff again? Eliforms, no, yeah. Chuck. I wouldn't use Eliforms. Eliforms is a software, a landing page software to collect basic info, name, phone number, email. You do not want somebody to have to scroll through 20 pages to get to the end because if they see the percentage bar that says, oh, you've done two pages and you're 10% complete, F it, I'm out. I ain't doing it anymore, right? That's not to say it wouldn't work. I just don't know what the, I don't know what the opt-in rate <clears throat> would be, just because the Eliform is more of a lead capture page and not like an online form. Yeah, you know, Lynn, you're new to insurance, but have been in financial services for a long time. This is really just using the renewal process to look for opportunities, right? Absolutely, Lynn. This is using the renewal of any of your lines of business every time they're renewing to look for opportunity. Doesn't mean you can't use this strategy in other places. This is just how we've built it out because most of our users have, you know, at least a hundred clients or more, you know, uh, to, that they can reach out to on renewal. And it's, if you're just starting out, Lynn, think about it like this. All of us 
that has started using Agency Elephant that had a client base left money on the table for as long as we've been an agent. Brian, you've had your agency for seven and a half years. You left money on the table for years. And this strategy is trying to pick up that money you left off the table. Lynn, you're doing these processes so that you can get that money before it gets left, right? On that first renewal, you're checking in as opposed to doing this strategy. Maybe Brian has had a client 14 renewals, every auto policy, every six months for seven years. And he's picking up money. He left 14 renewals in a row. One of these was a guy, and I don't know what it's like in your states currently, but we have a lot of people moving to South Dakota right now. And so all of my clients that are coming here, for the most part, are coming from out of state. And we had one guy that uh, moved here, was uh, retired law enforcement. Um, when we did his stuff, it was all via email, you know, so he got 100, 300. We did his home first because it came to me from the lender. Well, he fills out this form on his auto renewal and it led to an appointment. Okay. So he fills out the form, form hits my email. Um, he had some at the bottom, it says, is there anything else you'd like to discuss and, and cover? And that question on the bottom was key for scheduling a face-to-face. -face. Well, come to find out, this gentleman used to have USAA before farmers when he moved here. And USAA just gave him run-of-the-mill cookie-cutter coverage, okay? Didn't ask him any questions, just, he probably picked his own coverage because he didn't know better, for all I know, okay? We get him here and we're going over this form and we're just having a normal conversation. I find out, He's running around, was on 5,100, now with me at 100, 300. He has seven figures in assets in the bank. That's a That conversation changed drastically when, when we learned that. Now it's, let's, we don't need, let's look at higher liability limits. Let's look at a $2 million umbrella. We need to talk about life insurance. Like that's a big that's a big oops that USAA left on the table. And so even something like this to where this gentleman just recently moved here, now we're getting that opportunity on the six month renewal and it's not festering and we're chasing our tail with this guy because he's unavailable for just face-to-face -face appointments or he's unavailable every time we try to make a phone call to him because he's busy. This lets them fill out that form when it's convenient for them. It might be three in the morning, but that's the time for him to fill out that form. And it uncovered a ton of opportunity. And now he can sleep at night. You know, he's covered the right way. And it costs $37 a month extra to cover him properly. That guy's telling all of his neighbors about me. That guy's pumped. That guy's pissed at USAA and he's happy with my agency. And that's what it's about. Yeah, so just to go over the disclaimers with this one last time before, I mean, we'll probably end this call early because the strategy is not that long to go over and build out is one, this is going to require you to do some things, build a form. It's going to require you to build the drip. It's going to require you to actually look for the opportunity when that person fills out that form. Here's how you trigger that um, drip campaign, okay? You get your report for renewals. You come in and say, awesome, looks like Matthew's renewing today or this month or this in two months. Looks like he's renewing today. Let's go ahead and copy him to the renewal process group. Done. Matt just got the drips. Awesome. Looks like, you know, no name because I know I have no name in here. I don't have anybody else. Looks like no name. Uh, their renewal is processing. Well, won't even let me search them. Looks like Mark, you know, you come through here and you start filling out and you start grabbing these people. Looks like James Jimmy is renewing. Great. Here we go, James. Time to add you to that renewal processing group. This is how you trigger it. It's that easy. Consistently doing every time you get your report, putting those people in. Okay. And yes, Ray, I do have that process in Slack. Mine looks like this, and it triggers all of that immediately. And here's mine. It's Madhan, late payment, missed docs, process. It, this is Madhan renewal. I put people's names in here. Like, look at this. These are all the people that I'm doing it on. Same thing, just a little different. I spent the nerd time to build it. So now it takes me 
15 seconds less, you know, <laughs> but you can do it just barely a little bit slower than my Slack, which took me way too long to build. So Ray, that's a really good question. When you take them out of the group, you put them back in next year. My plan is yes, because life's always changing. And now watch so this, Ray. Watch this. Next year you come around, oh, looks like Matt's renewing, right? So I'm gonna come, I'm gonna search Matthew. Let me just go to the dashboards I know we'll pull up. Here's Matthew, I'm gonna come into his account, look like he's renewing. Let's go ahead and copy him into that group. Uh -oh. Process. uh oh, it's yellow, not green. Matt was already in the group. Let's go ahead and remove him. Let's go ahead and refresh that page. And let's copy them back into that same group, okay? Now, we just triggered that again. Green, move to the next one. So as you're doing this every renewal, it'll pull a yellow error. Hey, error. Well, because Matt's already in the group. You know? I would advise doing it annually just for the sake of retention. If you're in contact with these folks around renewal and you're the one wishing them happy birthday and all that stuff that Agency Elephant will do for you over the course of a year, I would do this annually. Now, Lance has a great question. Can't you do this in an event reminder campaign? Set a date for the renewal and have it do it automatically every year. Sure could. You know what, Lance? You absolutely can do that. And that is the smarter way to do that. However, it involves building a secondary thing and having another process. Our goal is to give you something you can do now and not add significant building to your plate. You can take that exact same drip, build it out for all customers with an X date, and send that out to every customer 30 days before their X date, the same renewal drip, email and text in an ERC. My process is when I send over that Slack, okay? When I send over Matthew Hahn and Slack, what happens is, is it grabs the date and it puts the date in the X date and I already have the event reminder built. So it does a couple things for me automatically, but you could come in and say, all right, Matthew Hahn, let me put you into the renewal processing. Great, done. Let's go to your fields and let me add an X date. The X date is 5, 25, 27, geez, 2021. There's my X date. Next year, it's going to go out automatically because I built the drip 30 days before that. On to the next one. You could do this as you go through your renewals. However, every year you'll have new people in your book of business that you didn't add to, so you still have to do the renewal process in drip, okay? Your renewals will always grow and change. You're always still going to have to do this and check on them. So one side, you know, devil's advocate here. I mean, Brian do this all the time. He has an idea. I tell him why his idea sucks. He has, and then I have an idea, and he tells me why my idea sucks. And we do this back and forth till we nail down how we think it should look in a perfect world. The negative of doing the event reminder, Lance, is you have always got to make sure you're putting an X date when you add a new customer so that that hits, because if you don't, you're going to miss that. The report tells you every single time who's renewing, and you can just do it that way. It's one way, okay? But if you have a process to do it every time another way, awesome. Um, so once you add someone in the group, you won't need to do it again. You will need to do it again next year, Dana. Every year, you'll have to redo it because it's a drip. What if you make a deal status for it, put the renewal process deal status before the renewals and it takes them off at the group 60 days later? Ray, phenomenal idea. I love that. You have a renewal process group that triggers the uh, here's renewal opportunity. Let's say, for example, I go into Matt's account. I search him. I click renewal opportunity. It triggers the drip immediately. That drip has a 60-day expiry and puts them back into only the customer group. That will do everything I need to do. So every time I can just click the renewal processing or renewal opportunity um, pipeline and put them in there. The negative is, here you go, Ray. You ready for this one? Phenomenal idea. However, you'll want to test it because if I click renewal opportunity again and hit update and move, it should add me back in as a new lead into that status and trigger that new drip again. But you'll want to check to make sure because if you're already in the already in the pipeline under that status and you put yourself back into that pipeline without moving out, it might not trigger that drip again. So something you'll want to test. On top of that, if you have multiple groups that it's triggering on move, right? Um, let's say if you have you know auto client group, home client group, right? 
well, it's going to remove all those groups and put the uh, the renewal opportunity uh, because you can only end up triggering off a of one. It, it's not going to remember when it moves it back into customer to then add all those other groups that you have. So if you are someone that does definitely like to have multiple groups because they like to be able to end up sending out multiple broadcasts for whatever reason, right? When you're making that automation switch back and forth, understand it is not going to remember to end up putting all those pieces of information back where you want it to because it, I mean, who would? Like hell, if you if if I if you took all my papers on my desk, threw it on the floor, and be like, hey, who belongs where? Like I I can get a general idea, but it, it's a it's a pretty it's a pretty hard run for anyone, let alone a, a a system of any kind of sophistication, to end up getting that situation handled. You can do whatever makes sense in your brain to make this happen, right? It can be in the pipeline. It can be one on one. It can be. Um, I mean, there's you there's, do it this way, Brian. Don't you come into the lead manager? Yep, and Karina, you'll come Karina in pulls and say, up our list on one screen, our yep. list inside of our mothership dashboard from the other, and adds them manually. Takes yep. her five minutes every day. There you go. Bang, bang. That is the leaders of the herd call. Not necessarily the coolest strategy in the books. But we talk about this every time. I don't know. My my commission check looks pretty cool this month. <laughs> sometimes the coolest strategy or sometimes the things that actually work aren't the coolest. And sometimes the coolest strategies don't actually work. This is okay? simple. If you signed up for AE yesterday, you could be you could be getting that low hanging fruit right now. Yep. Absolutely. That's pretty much it. I'm going through and deleting out all the stuff that I added in here so that if and when we ever want to shoot another video going over this, the stuff won't be here so that we can showcase it correctly. But this is it, guys. It's simple. It's simple. Give them a form. Tell them it's pending requirements for their insurance to renew. Put this in and motion. Instead yep. of watching Grey's Anatomy tonight for an hour, get your computer out and build this out and put it in motion. Okay. Dana, yes, the recording will be emailed hour to two hours. You should have it in your email. Because this is the one thing that um, has been really knee jerk success for us. Yeah. And it's, it, it's a numbers game, you know, not everybody will fill this out. Not everybody will go through this, but if you're sending out five a day, and his reform rate, and I'll be honest with you, our customer bases are very different, me and Brian. When he tells me some of the pain points of his customer base, I look at mine, I'm like, hey, those, I have different customer, uh, like different customers. Some of Brian's are a little more needy in some areas, but that's probably because his book's a lot bigger than mine. So those needy ones that I have aren't as large of people, but he has issues with his customers filling things out already. And taking action on certain things like hail endorsement or other things they need to. And if he's having a 50% conversion with knowing um, how his customer already fills things out because he sent stuff to him, right? And he knows that they don't really take action on filling things out or calling him unless they have a billing problem. Or unless it just hailed. Now they're pissed. Yep. And it's like, what do you mean I don't have hail endorsement? And you're like, bro, we just talked about this. Now, yep. it's, now it's, it puts that ball in there in on them. It's their fault. I've done my part. We've done our part as an agency. You didn't take the action. We've reached out every renewal. Yep. You know, and if you're saying, Hey, every 50% of my forms are going to get filled out on average and you'll get your own number. Come down to the number you need, like reverse engineer. I'm a big fan of reversing things to see how it works. Okay. So if you're saying, Hey, mine is 20%. Great. How many forms do you need to send out to get one or two extra life a month? If that's your goal here, that's a small goal and you can attain it. How many forms do I got to send out a month? Because you should have a decent amount of renewals if you've been in the business for a year or so. A couple of renewals uh, every day, you know, coming through. And if you're sending out five a day, I mean, shoot, 21 work days, 100 forms a month that are being sent out, 50 are getting filled out. Even if 25 of those get filled out, 
Has anyone on all. here ever had a customer try to blame you for not having an endorsement? Like one of the convenience endorsements, drop an F in the chat. Let's pull them at Dade. Because it happens to us a lot. They'll get hail. We get a lot of hail here. And it'll be like, cool. So where do I go to get my rental car? And it's like, well, you got to go to, you know, enterprise. Oh, they told me it's not covered. Yeah, it's not covered. You don't have rental car reimbursement on your policy. Well, what do you mean? I thought you, I thought we added that. This is oh, going to cover those babe. bases to where now it's, hey man, I reached out to you six months ago and you didn't fill out the form. I followed it. I even left you a voicemail. Like I'm, we're, we aren't mind readers. I can't read minds. And if this is something that you wanted, that would have been your opportunity to fill it out or call the office. Yeah, yeah. But we don't have that. And the one thing that I, I never want to happen and I haven't had it happen and I don't want it to, we're talking people getting pissed off over not getting their rental cars covered. We're talking about people getting pissed off, not having their gutters covered for, for cosmetic metal. I never want it to be, Hey, Brian, my spouse passed away last night unexpectedly. Please tell me we have life insurance with you. That's like, that is the worst thing that I think could ever happen to me as an insurance agent. It hasn't happened yet. Knock on wood. But now it's like, hey, I've we've talked about this at least once a year. I know we have. You've had that opportunity. And I don't ever want to carry that guilt of a, of a customer not taking action. And I know a lot of agents, they might, might ask one time. And as soon as that customer says no, it's no forever, according to that agency. A lot of stuff can happen over the years. They might be single with no kids. And in two years, they might be married with a toddler. And now it's important to them where it wasn't two years ago, you know? So this is, these are those things that for me as an agent are going to let me sleep at night, knowing that I've done my due diligence as your insurance advisor to, to make it easy for you to say yes. And unfortunately you guys didn't fill that out. And I, I apologize. I can bring a casserole. I'd rather bring a million dollar check, but I can bring a casserole. I've had something very, very similar to that story as far as someone, you know, passing away. Um, uh, you know, back in my captive days, we would always have, you know, two or three push months, right? Where you're really trying to push for more life insurance for whatever reason, right? I would always kind of gear it as a, you know, policy renewal and discount renewal, okay? And uh, that's, you know, if you're not thinking about that, if you are captive that has, you know, uh, uh, events to win, for you know a specific time of the year this is a really good way for you to just send all of that out all at one time to your current book and be able to end up getting some things lined up really quick so i mean this can be a, a big prize you know kind of run for you but back to the story uh i had a customer that i touch bases with guy is you know chiseled he is like six foot four you know 210 pounds kind of that perfect situation i sent him an email about uh, life insurance, talked to him on the phone with it. He calls me, uh, sorry, he emails me back just cursing me out. Like, what do you mean? I don't need life insurance. And I'll tell you right now, if anything happens to me, I've been taking care of my wife. She can figure it out for once. Three weeks later, I get a call from the wife. Uh, Mr. Olympian uh, just had a quadruple bypass and he's on life support. And she was going through his email, you know, trying to end up figuring out what bills she had to pay, things she had to do came across my email. She said, uh, she's like, Hey, did you, you know, were you trying to get life insurance for, for my husband? And I was like, yes, ma'am. She's like, Hey, are you this address? And I was like, yes. She was like, okay. She's like, um, well, he's in the hospital. I don't know if he's going to recover, but I know when he does recover, the first thing he's getting is a divorce paper. Absolutely true life story. <laughs> like, and, and it's, it's, it's bringing that stuff up even to the people that, that, you know, and it, it don't get me wrong. Yes, he had that happen, but at least I reached out. I tried to sell it, tried to have the conversation, and that feels a world world better than being in the other situation where they thought that they had it and they didn't know. Let's cross all that stuff out here, and let's put yourself into a better situation. Amen. Yep. Any questions? Note, you got that? My wife just gave me an idea. Speaking this of quadruple my... bypass. Like those nuggets, looking good on a buddy. kid's plate. On a kid's plate. Oh, well, you are a child, guys. Again, none of this works if you don't put it in motion and build it. Um, take an hour, 
build this out. I'm telling you it works. Um, you know what I'm into right now? Challenges. Do this for a month. Report back and share on our on our agency elephant page. Person that sends out the most forms. Person that receives the most forms because we can track okay. it. All right. Person that receives the most forms. We can track how many drips they send out as well. We can look at that. But throw a tally every couple of days. Give it like give us updates. And the person that has the most, I mean, if they're vocal and they say they have the most, we go look at it. They've got a ton and nobody else is vocal. We'll we'll chuck you ten thousand extra credits. Or a free month. Or both. Or a free month. What do you want to do? Free month or ten thousand? Well, everyone's going to want the free month because the 10,000 is only got a value of a hundred dollars. Oh, three months. Get out of here. Tom says, get both. Out Lance here. says both. It's both. Okay. I'm into it because you know what? We've been doing these challenges and we've been doing these agency of the herd call and giving you guys so many opportunities. We're, and we're seeing some people take action and we want to encourage you guys to, to act. Cause we know the second you take action on these kind of things, it's a snowball. You're going to take more action. You're going to do more things. And so we're going to put our money where our mouth is on this. Yep. In All right. Make sure to notate it so we can keep tabs. It's the 27th. Yeah. Throw it in. I'm going to pay, I'm going to make a note. I'm going to put a Sharpie on my whiteboard. <laughs> That's the only thing I have. I'm going to make a note and uh, we'll track this. 27th of June, we'll come back and we'll tally this up. But the goal, I mean, the deal is here. You guys got to be giving us updates through our, the Facebook page. Give us updates on how many forms you sent out, how the responses are going, how the uh, how those phone calls are going with your clients and all that. Throw them in the group and we'll monitor that. At the end of this, 27th, we'll take a look at who's done the most, take the most action, had the most responses, most best results, and you got a free month and 10,000 extra credits. Boom. Love it. All right. Have a Talk great soon. one, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Remember, the agency uh, of the herd, according to Matthew Hahn, which he's given three different names of this thing. <laughs> Leaders of the herd call, for God's sakes. Anyway, leadership of the herd. Leadership. <laughs> leadership like, look, anyway, from... it's every two weeks, same time, same bat channel. We end up being on Thursdays every two weeks. So once you've actually signed up for this call, you will get an email that it's recurring. Um, just answering some of those things in the chat for Daryl. And uh, y'all have a good one. Thanks, guys.